Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be repairing a whole range of Action Force Z Force figures from Palatoy. Now, if you watch videos over on my second channel, Toy Poloi 2, you'll have seen I did a recent unboxing where I found this armored troop carrier uh, in a charity shop. It cost me uh, ten pounds, and inside it there was a selection of figures, some of which I have already restored. Uh, I picked out the SAS guys, and I've done a video restoring those. But also in that lot of figures, there was a whole selection of Z Force figures in much the same condition and I put those with some other figures that I've already got that are a bit broken and battered and then today we're going to do a sort of bit of, of a mega restoration because you can see all of these figures need some work. Some have got uh, silver paint on them as you can see here that's very similar to the SAS guys that I showed you uh, so we need to remove the silver paint off him. Some have got almost no paint at all like this poor chap something's uh, happened to his hair he's gone almost completely bald so uh, he needs a lot of work. We have others that are missing limbs so you can see here this is an infantry man he is missing an arm but I have another infantry man here that has been crushed and someone sort of super glued him back together so we're going to swap some limbs off this one onto this one it's essentially a big mix of figures now these are the uh, Palatoy Action Force figures and they were made in the early 80s as a sort of uh, follow on from Action Man when Action Man got too expensive to make they shrunk him down and turned him into Action Force uh, I don't think these are particularly common all over the world because obviously in the States you had things like G.I. Joe but this is the UK equivalent of that. They're great figures and you often find them like this very played with with the bits missing. In fact the accessories seem particularly hard to find but uh, I'm going to do what I can with these to get them all looking great. So let's take a closer look at a few of them and I'll show you the sort of the, the real issues that we have to deal with. So here you can see this is a selection of uh, some of the worst ones from that lot. Uh, they do all need a clean which is going to be the first thing that I do. I would just use hot soapy water and a toothbrush. I would put all of these in the hot soapy water and give them a very good scrub because uh, that will clean them up quite nicely. I think this one here is particularly dirty. Looks like they have been played within the garden. This guy, as I showed, also has a silver paint. This shouldn't have the paint on it. If I bring in one that doesn't have paint on, that's what he should look like. There's not a great deal of detail on them. It's just little sort of bits of uh, paint. Uh, but this one, someone's gone round with a silver marker pen, I'm going to say, and put silver detailing on, including on the little uh, emblem on the hat there. Same with this guy here. You can see there's uh, silver paint all over him. So we need to remove that. He should look more like that uh, and that's fairly straightforward to do again when I was doing the SAS figures I showed you how to do that with uh, brake fluid it doesn't take too long and does make a big difference paint rubs on all of them essentially the heads and uh, the hands and the feet get uh, very worn so this is probably the worst case one that I have I'm not quite sure what's happened to his hair it looks like it's completely been removed maybe a child actually wanted to do that to make a bald version but um, yeah so we need to put the, the uh, hair back on him even the, the better one I have of that guy you can see He's still got quite a lot of paint rubs and the eyes also tend to go, so we'll have to uh, repaint the eyes. Uh, and then, yeah, limb swapping is going to be another issue. Uh, as I showed you, this chap here has uh, lost one arm. I do have another one which is very, very smashed up, this one here. I think uh, someone must have trodden on this. And I'm going to say a parent or someone has uh, super glued him back together, but you can see he is barely holding on. That's uh, If I actually push that, you can break the whole of the back of this figure off. So I'm going to take the best limbs off this one and put it onto this one using the uh, boil and pop method. Essentially, boil up the kettle, put the figures in the just boiled water, let them warm up. The limbs get nice and soft and you can then remove them. And then using a screwdriver, while they're still nice and soft, you can pop them back in again. It's uh, not the most complicated of things to do, but I reckon we can make one decent figure out of these two busted ones. So the first thing to do with these is to give them a good clean. As I say, hot soapy water and a toothbrush. I'm going to put all of these figures in that, let them soak for a bit and then uh, give them a wipe down. And I will also then do the boil and pop before I even remove the paint um, because I think that's a, another easy job to do. And this figure, or is it this figure? This figure is almost falling apart anyway, so um, I might as well get that done as well. So we'll give them a clean, we'll boil and pop the limbs on this one, and then we can start trying to tidy them up.
So after a good clean they are already looking a whole lot better just taking the dirt off them sort of brightens these figures up and you can see that I boiled and popped the limbs off uh, these two here so this body is still quite damaged but it's nowhere near as damaged as that one and by the time this is all sort of painted and touched up it's going to be a sort of good army building figure this one I'll uh, keep to one side because in future I may get another infantry man that is missing some limbs and I can use it for that now we need to get rid of uh, the silver paint so there's quite a few with silver paint those two have paint on them uh, that guy does that one does I think all the rest are possibly free of silver paint so we've got four figures there with silver paint to remove that as I say it's going to be brake fluid so you need dot for brake fluid I've got some in a pot here basically I'm going to dunk the figures in there for maybe sort of half an hour 45 minutes that should loosen this silver paint it won't affect the uh, factory paint it will just affect the silver paint I can then start to uh, scrub that off with a toothbrush and kitchen towel and use a toothpick or something as well if it's sort of caught in very tiny areas and just, just sort of slowly work my way around but as I say it takes about 45 minutes for this to work and then we'll get all of those cleaned up and then we can start painting them. It's now about an hour later and I've got all of the silver paint off that I need to get off. Some areas I've not tried to clean too much, certainly on uh, something like this, the webbing that's on the front of it. Uh, I'm going to be repainting that anyway so you can see there's little bits of silver left sort of in the grooves and that. I could have sort of spent time and picked all of those out but really it wasn't necessary. Otherwise all the figures are looking really nice so all the silver is gone and we can now get on with painting them. 
I'm going to do this in sort of three stages because there are three colors uh, mainly used on these. There's a lot of black, so I'm going to do the black first. Then there is some red, as you can see, on the hats and a little bit on the uh, hand grenades on this one. There's a little bit of uh, flesh color to be done as well. One of the figures has flesh colored hands, so you can see here. He's missing some fingers. I'm not going to bother repairing those. We just paint that up. And one of these infantry men has got a slight mark on his face there, so that needs a little bit of touch up. And then the final thing I'll do is paint on the eyes and the details, which I won't be doing with a paintbrush. I'll be doing with a pin, which I've shown before. So the first part is to uh, get all of the black painted on. This is going to take quite a while. There's loads of areas that need painting with the black and these figures have paint that needs to be put on the front and on the back of them. So I'm just going to sort of paint bits, let them dry, then turn them over and paint other bits. It's a bit of a long process and it's just because I've got so many figures, but it will be well worth doing. I'm using some uh, Vallejo model colours. This is uh, 70.950 black. And then uh, at the end, when I've painted everything, I'll put a satin varnish on the top of it to make it look the right sort of finish because the paint on these isn't a matte finish it's this more sort of satin finish so let's get the black painted and then we'll start on the other colors
So this is the first wave of painting done. As you can see, they're already looking a whole lot better. Just painting the black on immediately made a big difference. I've also painted the red of the sort of hats and other details. There's only a few little bits of red dotted around these figures, but it's enough to make a big difference. For that, I've been using this uh, Vallejo Game Air. I think it's an airbrush color, but it doesn't matter. You can still use it for a uh, sort of brush painting. And this is called Bloody Red, which is 72.710. I've mixed a little bit of black into that because uh, it needed to be toned down a bit and that matched the colour very nicely. I've also touched up the flesh tones which are, there are only a few little scratches I showed you and for that I've been using this which is a Revel Aqua colour uh, and this one is called Flesh which is um, number this is 361 or 35 so it's a, just a flesh coloured paint that with a little bit of white mixed in has uh, matched quite nicely. I'm now going to let all of these dry properly and then I'm going to start doing the fine details like the eyes and we've also got the little Z Force logo that needs to go on the shoulders. If I show you here there should be a little Z on that uh, but we will hand paint that on as well. So let's let these all dry and then I will do the uh, final fine details. <coughs> For painting the eyes I use this tool which is something I've made. It is just a pin stuck in an old paintbrush and that's a very good way of putting a small amount of paint onto a face and especially good for doing things like these eyes. You will find that it's a bit of sort of trial and error. You'll put a bit of paint on sometimes it doesn't look right so have a cloth ready just to wipe off the paint and uh, just sort of keep practicing. I've got one here which is my sort of uh, one that I'm going to copy so those eyes look really quite nice and I've got all of these here which have various amounts of the eyes and eyebrows missing and I'm just going to slowly work through it. If you put too much paint on but it's sort of roughly in the right area let it dry and then again use this tool just to scrape away the bit of paint that you don't want and then put the top coat on. It's a sort of trial and error process but you'll be able to get something that looks really quite good with a little bit of practice. So um, yeah just this and some uh, black paint which I have here and we'll get uh, these eyes and eyebrows back on. These are by no means perfect faces but you can see adding the eyes and the eyebrows does make a big difference. A lot of these faces have got scratch marks and scuffs on them so where I'm trying to paint doesn't particularly uh, sort of make it easier for the paint to flow nicely but you can see they don't look too bad at all so paint them on and then just use the point of this to scrape off any excess paint and I've now got five pretty reasonable looking uh, men there and they're ready to go back in the army. All we've got to do is add the Z Force logo onto the shoulders. For the Z Force logo that appears on the shoulders of these figures you can see one there. I'm just going to be painting this on freehand the same as I did for the SAS figures in the uh, video that you've seen of me restoring those. I was thinking I could sort of print something out but actually it turns out that you can paint them just as easy and um, these are a fairly simple logo in fact you can see it quite clearly there. It is essentially three lines that make up a Z. It's not that complicated. I, hopefully I've got one that's slightly better to see. Now all of these seem to be a bit faded. That one, actually there we go that one's not too bad. You can see that's what the Z looks like but on all of these other figures it's worn off or is barely there. So I will paint this on. I've got a very thin brush, very fine brush here. I've mixed up the same paint that I used to uh, paint the hat so it's a bit of red and a bit of black and I'm just going to carefully paint these on. If I go wrong I'm going to use the same tool that I did the eyes with. So this is my pin in an old paintbrush and I'll scrape away the excess and I should be able to get something that looks like a Z and matches the logo that was on there originally. But as you can see, the original ones are pretty faded and washed out. So um, anything will be better than that. I'm not going to do all the figures. I'm just going to do a few because actually the ones where it's sort of worn off completely, it doesn't really notice that there was something there in the first place. But ones like this, I'll uh, get them repainted.
the logos ended up looking better than I'd uh, hoped for really that you can see that does look like a Z I've used my little uh, pin just to scrape off some of it just to give it a little bit more shape but you can see the overall effect is those are looking very nice indeed so the final thing I need to do for all of these figures is put a top coat on everything that I've painted I'm going to be using this which is Vallejo Satin Varnish 70.522 uh, just needs a bit of that painted over everything I've painted to give it that sort of little sheen that the original paint would have had. So I'm going to get on with that process. It's going to take quite a while because we have quite a few figures. But once it's done and all dried, they will look like they should have done originally. The sheen on the paint will just look perfect. So uh, let's get that all done and then these figures will be finished. Now here's a tip that I thought would be useful to share with everyone because occasionally I have people uh, message me to say that when they've been painting their figures it doesn't matter what paint they're using occasionally uh, the uh, end result ends up a little bit tacky the paint never seems to dry properly and I think the main reason for that is that you don't mix your paint uh, fully to start with always give them a very good shake make sure they're well mixed uh, because if you don't mix them properly then you end up with uh, the wrong sorts of things left on the toy you've got to give them a very good mix always but if it does happen it's not the end of the world all you need to do is get yourself some of this which is baby powder or talcum powder put a little bit of that in a dish like this and then brush it onto uh, anything that still feels a little bit tacky you can just sort of gently brush it over and uh, any sort of loose stuff will brush off but you'll find that that will take any of the sort of tackiness out of the paint and you'll then be able to touch it and it won't sort of feel sticky anymore it's just a nice little uh, sort of tip to have uh, just in case this does happen to you sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't it does depend on the paint you're using but just a little bit of uh, baby powder brushed on and you'll find it does the job very nicely you'll find that uh, the the end result has a little bit of a sort of metallic shine to it I'm not sure why it does that it must be something that's in this baby powder but I actually quite like that finish so sometimes do this anyway on any of the figures I'm painting just to make the paint look that little bit sort of special at the end but anyway it's a useful tip to know if you're painting figures and you have this problem now you know and knowing is half the battle and here we go here are the finished figures as you can see they are looking really nice it doesn't take a huge amount of work with these uh, action force figures to get them looking good they're always fairly scruffy when you get them because they're just figures that everybody played with so they're always sort of missing the end of fingers and stuff like that and the paint is generally very warm but as you can see with a little bit of time and effort I've ended up with a really nice selection of these Z force figures and I'm going to put them with my SAS figures which I showed you in a previous video so if you want to have a go yourself then don't just follow what I've been doing in this video and you you can see these are the sort of results that you can get if you've enjoyed this video then why not check out some of my other action force projects and gi joe projects that i've worked on over the years make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time i upload a new video and thanks for watching thanks for watching toy ploy subscribe for more great videos you can also follow toy ploy on twitter facebook and instagram